Now, while I've got this clip selected, here's another feature that I think you're really going to like. Now, you've seen before, if you drag the playhead over the timeline and press the M key, you drop markers over a clip. Well, that behavior has changed a bit in 10.1. If I drag the playhead outside of that selected range and press the M key, you can see that now you're capable of placing timeline markers. So if I deselect this clip by pressing Command Shift A, and now I start pressing the M key, you can see that so long as the playhead isn't intersecting a selected clip, the M key places a mark in the timeline ruler, or the marker button for that matter, if you're a button clicker. However, if you've selected one or more clips, and you're playing merrily along, pressing the M key then places marks inside of that clip. So you can now place timeline markers to refer to as you work inside of Resolve. However, one thing you should be aware of is you can't move these markers, and there's still the limitation of whichever clip you select, you can only choose clear all for to clear all of the markers. Now if no clip is selected, I press Command Shift A to deselect all clips, and then I go to this marker pop-up and choose clear all. Now I'm clearing all of the timeline markers at once. There is not currently a method of clearing just a single marker. That limitation in mind, timeline markers are now available for your use. Moving right along, there is now another method of duplicating clips available to you. You already knew that you could select a clip, press Command C, and then change the destination track and press Command V to paste that clip back into the timeline on whatever track you like. However, now you can hold the Option key down and drag a clip to duplicate it that way and you can drag it to any track you want. So huge boon for people who need to duplicate clips who like to work via the mouse in the timeline. As always, you've got multiple levels of undo, so if you don't like what you've done, you can undo or Command-Shift-Z to redo. Those of you who saw the previous new feature title know that DaVinci Resolve has added support for still images edited into the timeline. This makes it easy to import projects via XML that have stills edited into the timeline, that is, still files with duration edited into the timeline, as opposed to a quick time movie rendered of a still. In DaVinci Resolve 10.1, two new formats are supported. So I'm going to select the master, add a new bin. I'm going to call this new stills. Jump back to the media page and open up my Ripple Media folder to show you that I now have a PNG file. PNGs are now supported with transparency and multi-layer PSD files, Photoshop files, are now supported. So I'm double-clicking each of these to import them. Funny thing, if I select this PNG test and we take a look at its thumbnail, it was having a bit of a redraw problem before, but once it gets imported, everything settles out. And if I jump back to the edit page and edit these in, of course, same caveat we saw before. They uh, import with one frame duration. So I need to zoom all the way in, stretch it out. I'll move over to this other one. Zoom in. Oh. I need to zoom in even more. There we go. Stretch that one out. And I'm going to move over to a clip with a less extreme test grade. You can see that in the case of the PNG, it's got transparency, and that transparency is being used automatically. 
In the case of the Photoshop file, this text isn't just for fun. These really are three separate rasterized Photoshop layers. And the way it works inside of Resolve is this whole collection of layers is treated as a single clip. There's no way of accessing the individual clips at this time. However, they all appear, so you can use it as one big title or one big chunk of background or whatever you want to do with it. And one limitation you should be aware of, text layers do not import. I mentioned these are rasterized layers. I created text and then I rasterized it inside of Photoshop. Text layers aren't supported and layer effects are not supported. So only the rasterized layers. That in mind, PSD files and PNG files are now useful additions to your workflow. For now, I'm going to push these aside. And I'll move to a clip that gives me a good excuse for adding a title. And I'm going to show you another new feature in 10.1, which is support for rich text. Now, if I add one of these basic titles to the timeline, and I'm zoomed all the way out, which I don't really want to be, so I'll set things up to be a little more centered over that clip. So I've got this title here. If I double click it, I open up the inspector. I'm going to add a few lines of text. I don't even know why I typed this. It's all so silly, but here's what we can do. First off, if I select all of this text, I can style the whole batch. Secondly, if I just select the top line of text, you can see that if I open this up, and I'm in a hurry, but I don't want to make anything that looks too silly. Maybe I choose that font. Oop. Not what I wanted to do. There we go. So I choose that font. Now I go up, choose a lighter version of that with this bottom line selected independently. You can see I can change the size just of that text. And so here I have two lines of text that are completely separately styled, all inside of a single text generator. So that's pretty handy. And while I'm working on this, of course, I have the option of moving to my transform tools. And if I want to drop it in the corner or off to the side or whatever I want to do, I can set all that up. Or I can undo out of that select all of the text and then use my position parameters to keep the box in the same place and move the text to where I want it to be. So still not the most sophisticated text tool around, but they're definitely making improvements as we go along. I'm going to save this for now and we're going to go out and open up a brand new project just so I can make a point. Another new feature they added is a bonus for those of you who are still using Final Cut Pro 7 or Final Cut Classic as many like to call it. In the edit page I'm going to choose import AAF EDL XML and I'm going to go look for that Final Cut 7 text demo. 
open it up, click OK. This is a really simple project. And the one thing I want you to notice is here is our bit of text. If I select it, you can see it in the inspector. It has a color that I chose in Final Cut 7. It has a font that I chose in Final Cut 7. It has positioning that I chose in Final Cut 7. And it also has a font size that I chose in Final Cut 7, 36. Everything is exactly the way it was in Final Cut 7, except the size. Now, numerically it matches, but for whatever reason, DaVinci Resolve's use of the size parameter is different than Final Cut 7's. So even though it correctly imported the value, 36, the size isn't the same. Not the biggest problem in the world. I can just go ahead and zoom that up. And there I go. I had a little more time to think about this title. This, again, not perfect, but it's a big jump forward. And besides saving you from having to retype and respell check the titles, you now get a lot more styling coming in. So as soon as they iron out some of the remaining snafus, you can see where the DaVinci Resolve team is going with this. They're looking to import some pretty sophisticated text import capabilities from your NLE. So while we're talking about generators, here's another little new feature that I think you'll appreciate. I'm gonna move this text generator up to track V3. And I'm now gonna drop in a grayscale generator underneath that. It's a little longer than I need it to be, so I'll snip it into place. So I've got this generator. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that I want to blend this generator against the clip in the background. When I select this generator, you can now see each generator has a full set of composite mode controls, transform controls, and cropping controls. So I can select this generator and choose, say, multiply. So now you have the option of using generators creatively in addition to simply plopping them into the timeline and using them as is.